So Dick is going to launch this into this um, amazing 20 mph wind and into the sun. As always happens when you're attacked by the Luftwaffe. Yes, we're at Snoopy Corner in Bray Lake where we do our 24-7 testing. This is Boat 11, destined for the Atlantic this year. I'll point out the bits. Snoopy the Viking, the skipper. GPS logger, just for test. And only for test again, text-to-speech. And a Mobius video camera, which I'll switch on. That should start flashing when it's rolling. And I'll switch it on. And it'll talk again just for test out of the text to speech. Snoopy's Pickax 28X2 GPS Oreo Pilot. Software version Oreo, last update 6th of December 2017. And it should select a uh, first waypoint. 29 seconds. Target 24-7 north position. 24-7 north position. So it should just sail between the two waypoints. Right, this is where I'm going to fall in and long-suffering wife June is going to hold the camera. Should be rolling. Here we go. 10.40. Hopefully it get away. Now at the moment we got a wind of about 15 miles an hour from the south south west. But that's probably sorry, south south west is over there. But it's expected to come up very strong to go for us tonight, probably over 30 or more. So will it get out to its first waypoint? So the boat's been balanced for natural tacking. Out to his first 24-7 waypoint. It's out over there. Drifting in again, not surprising since we've got a drift of the water of about 0 0.06 of the wind speed which is probably in the ballpark of a mile an hour. So he's got to make progress of more than one mile an hour tacking up wind in order to make progress. And he's at risk of coming aground again. Yeah, looks like he's done that, so I'll launch him again. Yeah, near the reeds again. Oh, it's got a bit further this time. Got the spot tracking on June's smartphone. So this design, which we haven't changed for years, means the limit is probably about 15 miles an hour wind for the boat to make progress directly into the wind, including any tacking. If the wind is stronger, then it'll go backwards, slowly, hopefully. So and when the wind changes again, then uh, it can make progress. Obviously, if you're coming from west to east in northern latitudes, that's a lot easier. I think the technical term is he got his knickers in a twist. Lost a lot of ground there. Ended up coming downwind.
but then he got onto a good tack. Made a bit more progress out. GPS tag 1140, 18 seconds, target 24-7 north position, 19 meters, at 202 degrees, GPS twist 120, speed 116 knots, left 18. GPS tag 1140, 37 seconds, 24-7 north position, target 24-7 position south, 112 meters, at 180 degrees. GPS course 170, speed 0 0.7 knots, right 10. Yeah, he's barely visible from the clubhouse here. It's raining. It's half an hour after sunset. The Snoopy's boat is out there somewhere. Yeah, I can just make him out in the middle of the view at one of his 24-7 waypoints. No navigation light. I forgot to charge up his batteries. He'd spent too long indoors. Not visible from the footbridge without his navigation light on. What a difference a day makes. Snoopy's boat 11 has now been on 24-7 for 24 hours. And we have Hurricane Callum arriving with winds expected to be 20, gusting up to 40 or a lot more. This is from the Segway point. Just gone on to another tack. serious gardening. We've got permission to cut all the stuff down that's in, at our base. And of course we choose to do it in the middle of Hurricane Callum that's coming in. I find dumping this in the right spot and I'm often going to get into trouble if it's not here. Yeah. I uh, interrupted the gardening to check out if the boat was okay. And then Snooky corner again. Expect him to get blown downwind because there's only a limit to the speed he can tack into the wind and the surface water is drifting back about 6% of the wind speed. He's 
just made it onto another tack. So they may not go into the bank just yet. Certainly getting closer to this bank. Just a matter of time. Right, it's 13.25 GMT and he's certainly not given up yet. There's one thing more difficult than sailing in a gale, it's putting a boat together in a gale. Dick is going to launch this into this um, amazing 20 mph wind and into the sun. As always happens when you're attacked by the Luftwaffe. Well, it's going off like a bat out of hell. While I was nattering to our friend here, I... Uh, I missed the fact that they launched the boat and so Woodstock is on his way out. We're filming each other and Woodstock is doing brilliantly. He must have got at least 10 yards away but I saw somebody cheating with the radio control. <laughs> We stopped sailing pretty well. No rudder control for quite a long time. It's actually just went in a straight line yeah. to the east. Yes. So now you can turn the rudder right control off. Off. Look as though Woodstock's well on the way to Bravo. Is in Bravo according to this? Yeah. yeah. So it's turned. it's turned then, yeah. Yeah, that's right. He made it to Bravo. Well done Woodstock. Yeah. Nine. Right. I've got 11. Well on the way to Charlie now, down here. Peter just pointing out some of the instrumentation he's got on the boat here. So the boat is going that way, that's the wind vector and also it shows the actual course over ground from the GPS information there, that the small arrow. The length of the line is the speed as well. The length will vary. Yeah. That's, the wind, uh, so that blue line is the wind. And that's the track. And he's getting very oh, he's close. To, he's he's at Charlie. Charlie. Yeah, he's got to Charlie. Look at that. Bang on. So now he should turn and come towards Delta. Which is back this way. So there he is. on his way to Delta and the islands. Shouldn't have any difficulty getting back from Delta this time. <laughs> no, should do. They'd be rather fast. <laughs> um, the wind the on, uh, on the water at there is about uh, 9 to 10 mph. Right to the islands. Waypoint Delta. 
real strong one coming up. We're stock approaching Delta. Delta is about there. Right, we'd stop about to hit Delta. Then he'll turn towards us. Time to turn. So, Woodstock has made it to Delta and he's on his way back to base, just here. All nicely clear of vegetation. Here's Woodstock on his way back to base. Sailing nice and accurately towards his base target. Time to hit the ground, because he's got a long keel. Brilliantly successful. Woodstock has done the circuit. And Snoopy is still on 24-7. Yes, <laughs> he's relieving himself. Woodstock made it way back again, autonomously. And uh, so, it's goodbye from me. It's goodbye from him. Goodbye from him. <laughs> <laughs> and where's Woodstock? It's goodbye from Wimstock. <laughs> Call a gale force wind. The spot tracker gives us a report every five minutes and this shows that Snoopy came ashore sometime between about 1928 and 1932, in other words 1930, 7.30 p.m. That corresponds to the wind strength coming up to much higher around about after six o'clock. So that was just a little bit too much for Snoopy. 
that's off the underground site. There's Bray Lake and it's a local amateur weather station. The Met Office site gives a rough idea of the wind speed and direction in the area. Right, it looks as though it's just on the west bank about there. So all we've got to do now is get my wellies on June and she can wait out to get it. <laughs> yeah, we've had this before. We thought it would be easy to see it, but it's somewhere along here. Yes, we found it. Had to look for a dead tree. There's a glimpse of it through there. Might be difficult. Yeah, there is access down here, but it's not going to be easy to get to. So I think it's a phone call to the clubhouse. Yep, that looks like our rescue. Yeah, Scott's doing the business here. Yeah, I'll pass it to you, dear. Try not to fall in. to put it in the car. It's still working. GPS captain zero six twenty one seconds. Target twenty four seven nose position. One hundred and thirty five meters. So hopefully not a lot of work to do to get it ready for the Atlantic. Snoopy's safely back at home. Let's have a look inside the box. A little bit of dampness has got in, but not a lot. That might be condensation. We'll restart the tracker, because that seems to have stopped. Switch it on again. Well, I've just pressed the central switch there, and uh, the tracker's running again. So it should start giving positions from where we are in Sunning Hill. After a long time of not moving last night from where it had come aground. Its last position was 21.08. It stopped reporting, which is normal for a spot trace. But after switching it on again, we get the latest position in our garden. And that's about the right position in the back garden, where, near where the swimming pool used to be. And that's where he is now. Yeah, apparently I've got to clear up this room a bit. Mm -hmm. that, that's right, is it dear? Yes. Ready? Yes. It's not true that I'm going to be banished out to the summer house that we've now got. But um, we might expand the real estate that I occupy. Yes, it seems the storm did more trouble to my garden furniture. Oh dear, I've just set off the water spurter. Oh dear. It's uh, major problems health and safety in our garden. 
So Snoopy, guess you're ready for the Atlantic. This is the GPS logger, which runs off its own little battery. And we can play back the data recorded from our attempt at 24 seven, just by clicking on draw. And what we've now got is we started off from the bank, 1441, drifted in. And because it's in this box, it's going for the northern 24-7 position. There, hit it at 1140. Now it's trying to go upwind, because the wind is coming up here, to the next position. So entering that box of the 24-7 north position, selects. However, it's got blown back by the wind, back into the starting box, so again, it's trying to go upwind to the 24-7 north position. Time is ticking away. It's now 13.42. We started off at 10.40 odd. So that's three hours and it's only made it that far against the wind. Now it's making a bit more progress. There, 1441, and surprise, surprise, only took him three minutes to get downwind to the next waypoint. In fact, over the hours that the logger was working, there were three occasions when it made it to the waypoint. Unfortunately, rather than days of data, somebody forgot to charge the logger up. So, in fact, by the time we got to about 7 o'clock in the evening, uh, the logger stopped working because the batteries had run flat. But it's still useful data. This is the same data, but simply running it fast, about 60 times actual speed. So instead of seeing the whole track, we've got a replay. So you can see the occasions it was blown back by the wind and hit the bank. And it's fighting its way upwind to try and get to that waypoint. I should point out some things here. The vector here is the direction of movement of the boat, not the direction the boat is pointing in. The boat will normally be trying to tack into wind like this but the actual movement of course could even be backwards and that's shown by the vector. The data that's being played back is a standard GPRMC NMEA sentence and the first field there is in fact the time. Here's the raw GPS logger data, standard NME a sentence, GPRMC, time 1441 and 46 seconds, latitude 51 degrees, 29.97, etc. North, 0 degrees, 41.69, west. Speed, 1.57 knots, direction 29 degrees, and the date. For those of you who want to use your own software to plot it. But this really is like watching paint dry, so that'll do. The Mobius video camera only has a capacity of about two and a half hours, but that's still useful. He reached his first waypoint within about an hour. GPS time 11.41, 7 seconds, 24 7 north position. Target 24 7 position south, 102 meters, and 180 degrees. GPS cross 127, speed 0 0.0 knots, left 47. So, what are the conclusions? Well, number one, remember to charge up batteries in things like the GPS logger test equipment.
if you expect any useful information. Same applies to things like the onboard video camera. But this kit is obviously just for test. So when he goes for the Atlantic, he uh, he'll be on his own. The uh, main thing is, of course, that it looks as though he can cope pretty well with the wind directly into his face. At least he won't drift backwards too far. At least he can play for time until the wind changes into a more favourable direction and he can then make progress towards his destination somewhere in the States, allegedly.